Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for this Get Ready With Me featuring a lot of new makeup. If you saw my recent haul, you'll know I picked up a lot of new items that are new to the market and I wanted to give them a try, starting with this Westman Atelier product, which has been difficult to find. I keep seeing it uh, sell out here, but it's the Liquid Super Loaded in the shade Pot de Peche. I also picked up the, where is it? Oh, I just put it down. The Hourglass product the Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. I've got mine in the shade nine. I also was most excited about this launch, which is by Clay de Poe. It is their eyeshadows and I picked up a couple of them so far. We've got number one here. We're trying that out today. It's one of the cool shades. We also have a Givenchy blush. I wanted to give it a try. Then we've got the Dior Pencil in 033. And then we have this lovely Isam lipstick palette. We're gonna give these a try here and I'll give you my thoughts along the way and at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. If you saw the recent unboxing, you'll know I picked up a lot of products I'm going to be trying, but I also was sent some lovely PR. One of the things I really wanted to try was this product by New Bot not New, <laughs> True Botanicals. It's a niacinamide and biotin booster and it's a powder product like this. You can see a little bit of the residue there. And it says, Mix one to two shakes into your favorite serum, moisturizer, or mask. So I've been mixing this into my Tata Harper serum, the brightening serum, and I use it morning and night. So I'm hoping for some boosted results here. And then I also received this Jones Road. It's an oil-free moisturizer meant for humidity and heat, not meant for. Can't remember how they phrased it, but there was an emphasis on heat and humidity and that this would be a good moisturizer for that kind of climate. And I've been skipping moisturizer since it tends to get more humid here. So those are the things I'm giving a good go so far, but there are so many lovely products I wanna try out. Uh, but we're gonna start with this one, one of the more exciting launches, I think, which kind of quietly landed on various websites uh, and then quickly sold out this Potapesh shade. I have not seen any reviews, but I have seen thumbnails. So from what I could tell, it looked like a really lovely product. And this is again, the shade that seems to sell out. So I saw it sold out once. I'm just gonna put it under the eye to show you how I've been playing with this. Uh, I've sold it, seen it sold out once, and then I purchased it when I came back and then it was sold out again. So hopefully they'll have these in stock maybe by the time this goes up. So this is how I've been using it daily. So I use it as a bit of a blurring kind of product. So I don't have to use as much makeup or maybe no makeup. So I will do this instead of makeup. <laughs> Just put sunscreen and then put this on and then maybe powder, maybe. So it has a nice, lovely way of drying down and What's interesting about this product that's different than other products I've used, I can go in this area here with pores and it's not emphasizing, I mean, you can still see my pores, it's not like it blurs them, but it's definitely not making them look any worse than they are because anything with glow will typically do that. It usually will emphasize pores because it reflects the light off of all the surfaces, including the pores, so I typically won't add anything glowy there. And my one exception though is hourglass powder. So dim light, I'm actually gonna play with that a little bit today because I've been experimenting because this reminded me of, I don't even know if hourglass still has that product. It's the one that came in a little, it had a doe foot applicator and it was like a concentrated liquid version of their powder, which was really interesting. And I, if they have it, I'd love to try it again, just to kind of compare. At first, this reminded me of the Rose Glow Face Tint by Chantecai, this one, this one right here. But I feel like the particles are even more fine. Yeah, there's something really interesting about the Westman Atelier. I haven't totally identified, but what I think it is, is I think these particles are very, very small and virtually undetectable. And I don't see any individual particles. But you can see really quickly, side by side, how that could serve as if you don't like makeup or don't wanna wear a lot of makeup, which is kind of where I am right now, don't love wearing a lot of makeup on my face, um, especially in the hotter months. It'll change when we, once we go into fall. You can see here the difference, the Western Atelier versus, versus none. So that right there is like my perfect kind of no makeup, no makeup. So in real life, this is how we go out. Doesn't look amazing, I don't think, on camera because there are lights that are making um, things a little bit more reflective than they are in person. Chantecaille, 
favorite lip product for moisturizing. But I also wanted to go in with another product right now because I wanna show you this without any product underneath to show you how sheer it is. So it's the Hourglass Hydrating Skin Tint. So I played with this like once or twice. Yeah, probably a couple times since I got it just to see. The first time I tried it was right after I got back from our trip. So it was very tan and this was very much a lighter shade. It's been about two weeks since we got back now and my tan is quickly disappearing. I'm gonna show you what this looks like directly on the skin so you can see what level of coverage you can get. And this is a really easy to apply, like I would just go in with my hands with this one. I don't think a brush is necessary. And the reason why I initially was not that interested in this is because it talked a lot about hydration and how hydrating it is. And I thought my skin doesn't need further hydration, at least on the center. But then I saw, again, some thumbnails about how much people like this. So then I thought, let me just try it. And then some of you let me know how much you love this. So I thought, let's, okay, let's try it. So here it is half. So it says ultimate dewy glow. So I don't really look for that in finishes. I look for more of a satin, but it does feel very lightweight. It claims to feel lightweight, which it does feel. It feels like skincare. And the shades are flexible, which I can see because if it's sheer, then you definitely get a more flexible kind of range. The undertone is probably the key part there. And their claim is less is everything. And I do think that if you are a uh, less is more makeup person you'll like this product but also think about the skin type because it talks about it boosts skin moisture levels by 52 percent it has a dewy glow and then it says it visibly plumps and smooths skin i think there's a very healthy skin kind of appearance to this so this is no product this is product yeah so for me with the more combo skin it's not the first thing i'm going to pull for but it does have a lovely feel like i can see drier skin types really liking this very easy product to use i like that it's in a tube also does feel a little bit like Chantecaille's Future Skin, like more of a gel-like feel on the skin. And then let's go ahead with the Westman Atelier on top of this, so you can see what that might look like on top of product. Yeah, I feel like this is a potential hero product. You can do so many different things. I love versatile products like that, but definitely has been a no makeup, no makeup product. So here's what it looks like on top of. Now you can use the Westman Atelier as a highlighter as well, which we'll do later. But I wanted to show you if you wanted something very, very natural looking, you can do that. I'm gonna go in though with this Dior pencil right now. This is a newer product, it's in 033. It said new, but I'm wondering if it's because it's a new shade. Uh, I have not seen this shade before, let me know if you have. But I'm going to apply it a little bit differently than I do normally, because I wanna show it to you by itself. So in case you don't use brow gel, you can see what this looks like. So this one does a really nice job of filling in at the front, I noticed, without being too heavy. So if that is an issue where sometimes, which I have been in the past, too heavy handed here and then it just looks severe, this is a great one because it builds really slowly. Takes a little bit more time, but I think you get a softer appearance to the brows. More natural as well. And this is a great color match. I used this before and I think zero universal brown, something like that. So when I want a really soft look, I'll skip gel and just do this. That's it. So really, yeah, very natural looking brow. This time I'm gonna take this gel and I'm going to put the gel first. And this is the order I would normally go in. So I would go and put this in first, just so I can get those brow hairs going up and I can see all of my brow hair. And actually, when I have zero time, I do this and no pencil. But when I want a more perfected look, I'll do this and the pencil. So there's the gel. And you can see the gel has a little bit more warmth than the actual pencil. And they're different colors, 032 in this gel, but this is 033, the pencil. Do they have a brow gel that's 033? Cause I would love that. Just a little bit cooler. So then I go in and fill in. Okay, so then I'm gonna go in with the brow gel. And this brow has more hair. It just always has. 
Okay, and then let me just let that dry and then I'm gonna fix the front because I can see <laughs> we need a little help. Next, we're gonna go in and do a little eye concealer. Still love this Chanel. Actually, I had a question about that. How come I didn't include this in the, um, if my holy grails were uh, discontinued, that one? So I featured five and this would definitely be one that I would feature as my next, just trying to get enough here. Um, this would definitely be one that I would feature in my next five. Pretty sure it would be the Sisley under eye concealer because I still think that's really lovely. But uh, yeah, so this would be definitely one I would include in the next series. And then I was reminded from the comments that the Touche Club might be a good alternative to the uh, La Prairie. And I agree, that might be a nice one. I've got a research that one a little bit. Um, I've had it a few times. I just need to find the shade that would coordinate. And also I was looking at the clay de Poe, the one on the brush, the one in the brush. I actually reviewed that. What was that? Oh my gosh. How did that happen? What is that? Oh my gosh. That is my concealer. Somehow it left off the table and then hit the floor and ended up against the wall. So I don't know it was this concealer, but it looks like it's fine. I had the lid on. The Clay de Poe. The Clay de Poe concealer in the brush, but then I noticed it wasn't very uh, available, which makes me wonder if something's happening with that. Let me know. I don't want to pick it up if it's not something that will continue to be something that they have. Um, but I also really liked that when I reviewed that years and years ago. The La Camouflage Stilo. I feel like we have a lot of dewiness happening here and I I don't think this is the greatest look for my skin. I don't know why. I think it looks great on other people. I don't know on me. I don't know if do we, I just, maybe I'm not used to it. But we're gonna go ahead in with a little bit of concealer because I can't, can't locate my actual primer, my Chantecaille. We're gonna go in with a little bit of the Clay de Peau concealer in Honey and just use that. Let's go in with this. I want to show you because if you like this kind of finish on the skin, then we can see what the eye would look like with that. And then we'll go ahead and fix everything. We're going to go with number one by Clay de Poe. Now I've played with this once already because I couldn't wait. Um, this is one of the most exciting launches that I've seen go by that I was really interested in picking something up. There are a lot of launches coming out that I'm letting pass by because someone actually identified what I was trying to explain. Yes, being selective. I'm very selective about what I even try here because I already have so much um, that I just don't want to add to what I have uh, if I'm not going to use it. So we're going to go in though with this number one brush by Ruffer and pick up this pink shade. And this pink shade is lovely. It's got a little bit of a coolness to it, which I like. So just a thin layer. So if you want just a really pretty soft glow, you could do this and mascara and be done. If you're not wearing a lot of makeup, like this seems like, okay, that's enough. Um, but if you like makeup, we're gonna build this a little bit. Okay, so this is a very gossamer type of palette. I'm gonna take this here. Um, this has more of a sheer appearance to it. Uh, the way I'm going to use it today. So of course you can combine in different ways, but the way I'm going to use this day is going to be uh, for those of us who are really wearing very, very minimal makeup and enjoying that uh, fresh kind of appearance. I really appreciate about this palette because I think that's the look that this ends up being. It's not a very obvious look, but you can definitely see a little effort was put in here, but a uh, very easy product to use also. But it's a very refined, elegant, tastefully done, understated look. So we're gonna take this now. This is the darkest shade here. I've got a number 13 refer. I'm just gonna add that to the corner. So I love easy to use palettes that have a really pretty, elegant result. And this is one of those. And I love the cool tones. So these are categorized as cool, warm, and neutral. So I'm picking up the cool palettes first because I feel like if this was going to be a warm palette, I don't know if I'd even see anything, <laughs> which I guess might work, but I prefer cooler tones just because there's a little bit more of a visibility with this, even though I don't want it super obvious. 
I can at least see it, but I feel like with some warm palettes, I, I really can't can't see much of anything except to maybe a glow, which is the thing. So I'm gonna take a 201 here by BK Beauty and just blend. It just really has a beautiful glow to it. So we're gonna take this shade again, and I'm going to put this right next to that deepest shade. You can just see how these colors flow and blend into each other, kind of like a watercolor. Let's take this. It reminds me a little too of the, not the colors of, but this does remind me of the gossamer appearance of something like the Organza palette. I don't know if we remember that one from Dior, but I think a lot of people were surprised at how sheer a veil it was of color. So if you think about the name, which was Organza, it completely makes sense. And that's kind of the feel I get here with this palette. Of course, you could take this color, you can see, and you could smoke it out. I think that'd be beautiful. One day I'll do that. But I just want to go for something really classic, timeless, natural. It's a number 20, uh, 23. I'm just going to make like the slightest bit of an eyeliner here. Just along the lash line, really soft. Just like that. And then I'm just going to add mascara. But this is a really easy palette to use because of the fact that it just blends together. It builds slowly. Beautiful finish. It's got a beautiful satin finish to it. It's just lovely. Okay, so I'm gonna add some mascara and then let's see what this looks like. Okay, I went with uh, Chantecaille's Fossey Longest Lash Mascara. Oh, I just remembered. I have the Clay de Peau Mascara. Let me do a full face or something. One eye, one cheek, one lip Clay de Peau. Yeah, I definitely think I have everything, hmm, mostly everything for a whole face of Clay de Peau. Just under eye concealer. Yeah, definitely shiny looking. Um, but it's still a lovely look, this eye look. Yeah, taking a bit of Victoria Beckham in trench right under the eyes just to correct a bit of redness. I am gonna conceal though. So I just wanted you to see in case you like this dewy kind of look, this is how it would look with the eye makeup. But for me, I just, I don't know if I'm just not used to it or I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know. But I prefer more perfected center of the face. Just my taste. But in real life, it's just fine. So actually, let me show you how this looks. If you want to go in with something different with uh and maintain a little bit of that glow i just need to powder the center of my face it just gets more oily throughout the day everything would be sliding around here in a little bit if i don't powder yeah see even that looks better right there just the concealer so this is clay de peau in honey now if my skin tone was even and i didn't have discoloration maybe just some powder here would be great but you can see the power of this concealer and why i Continue to buy it over and over, and it has SPF. So anything I can do to protect these dark spots, which are getting so much better, which is why I will go out with no makeup. I'll show you what this looks like, and then we can always add powder on top. Okay, let's use this refer number five for now. We're gonna go in with Dim Light now. This is by Hourglass. It's in one of their palettes that I have. I thought I had an individual one, but I have so many palettes that I have this dim light in it and it's a great one for more towards the center of the face because it doesn't seem to have as much glow some of their powders i think have more glow than others depending on the powder but you can see here that does a really nice job so if you want to maintain you can see there's a bit of a glow there i actually think i might pick up a regular size or maybe a mini of dim glow if they have it because i do like that especially if i'm not going in with makeup makeup and i just want to use a little bit of the westman atelier and spf and then maybe the dim light might be nice but i'm gonna go in here with the chantai's perfect blur so you can see what that looks like over here which is my normal routine if you want a little bit more perfecting and not as much of a glow. Now this side's gonna hold a little bit longer than the dim light. Dim light up above, perfect blur, and then the dim light. This is just an alternative if you're looking for something a little bit different. I'm gonna finish off here and kind of try and even them out though. Let's go into Victoria Beckham Marble. Oh, that's really heavy handed today. BK Beauty 203. I'm just gonna take this and help me work this in here that was a lot and then I move this towards the center so it's not going outwards but rather inwards and then take a bit of the perfect blur powder here this is a rougher number 32 
got a flat side to it. Like a, it's a really interesting brush. I like it. That way I can get next to the sides of the nose easily. Add a little bit here. I'm going to take my Merit brush. Use that. Let's go in with blush. So we've got this here, this Givenchy blush. And this is in three. And I liked that it had a more peachy tone. It's the only one I could find that had a peachy tone, although it looked really vibrant. So it comes with a little powder puff, which I tried. The only issue with that is that so when you dispense it, it looks like this. And if you pick up the product like this, it's going to end up on the little pad like this. Um, and then I ended up with little dots of blush versus a more even distribution. So one of the things I was wondering is and I haven't read about application, but how do you apply this without it ending up splotchy? So I decided I was just gonna kind of shake it up like this so that it's not as, the particles aren't as isolated. See how it's like still little dots here and if I just do this, it's still, I'm not sure why. I can't get them to really separate. So just making sure I kind of stir it up with the blush brush, I've got a, Deluxe Kabuki here, and you can see it helped break that up. And then that way I can apply it a little bit more evenly, because otherwise it just doesn't work as well. So I kind of have to stamp it in there to break up the particles to get it more even. So let me know if you have this, if you have a way to use this more efficiently, more effectively, more efficiently. Really love the way that this blush meshes with the skin. It's not sitting on top of the makeup. It's really pretty on the skin. You can see that sheerness of the, um, Hourglass product because you can still see my skin through and this is the same thing you can still see the skin through this blush so it's a really skin complementing kind of blush it's going to keep a natural look it is quite vivid though so I'm just going in with the tiniest tiniest bit and I'm having to stamp it a little bit here so like I said let me know if you have a different or better way and I haven't seen other people. I don't watch other videos on products that I know I'm going to pick up just so I don't pick up on their interpretation before I have a thought about it. Um, but so let me know. So, so it comes out like that. Almost helps to have a brush that's a lighter color so you can see how it is on the brush uh, versus I'm guessing if I had a deeper colored blush brush it would be hard to see a how much I have on there and b how evenly distributed the powder is but I really like the result. So I would be probably not using this on a daily, like it wouldn't be something that I would use if I had five minutes to get ready, but it would be something that I would use if I had time and was being really intentional with my makeup. This would be a product I would pull for because it just really complements a fresh uh, skin look. It looks like it went on as almost a cream blush that's how pretty it is on the skin. But you don't have that creamy texture. So if you like the effect of cream blush, but you don't like the feeling of it, this might be something to look at because it is very, very close to the skin. You can see it just is seamless with the skin. So I don't know if it's a different technology, what they have going on here. Let me see what it says. Ultra finely milled weightless texture. Yes, it's weightless. Blends into the skin. Yes. Diffusing color for a natural second skin finish. Yes. Intense color payoff. Yes. It's got a translucent healthy flush. Yes. And it says it's up to 12 hours, which I can see because it's really just become one with the skin. I can see how it can be long lasting because it is vivid, first of all, but then it just isn't sitting on the skin at all. Effortlessly illuminates. Yes. So all of those things. I agree with all of those things. Oh, did it say how to use? Let me see. Does it say how to use? This is an integrated powder puff, making it perfect for on-the-go touch-ups. I don't think I would use it for that. It just seems like it's not easy to use on the go. <laughs> it is definitely a very flattering blush, though. It's very nice. Use the puff to press into, oh yeah, see I want to do that. There is the application with the brush, but also it says to swirl this in here, which you end up with a lot more if you do that. So I would definitely do what I did for my applicant, for my level of application, which is just to kind of break the particles up and pick them up. Because if you swirl it, you're going to end up with a very, very intense amount, which I want to be able to control it versus having too much at once. I'd rather build this slowly. You can definitely do a pop of color too, quite easily with this. 
and I'm just going in with the teeniest, tiniest bits. I just know this has some intensity to it if you love intense blushes. I think you'll really like this one, but we are gonna go ahead and of course add a little bit more powder just to blend that all in. We're gonna go back to this Potential Hero product here, the Weston Mantelier, and I'm going to take a little bit of that. We're going to use this because I wanna just distribute a little bit more evenly. So this is a, I don't even know if you can find this brush anymore. It's the Chantecaille one, the liquid sculpt brush. Great for liquid products. So you can see there how pretty that is. Gosh, it's really pretty. And I am not a highlighter fan. I've got this tiny refer number. Oh no, this is a Ray Morris something. What are you? Oh, 9.1. Let's do the inner corner as well. While we're here, this teeny tiny little brush. So Isam kindly sent me this and I have a lip pencils as well, but I wanna see how this looks just on the lips. So I actually tried one already. Isam number 19, W19, this one right here. I feel like this is the closest to my lip color. You can definitely mix these up, but um, let's go in with this one. Uh, yeah, I just wanna go in with this first and we'll play with this Isam lip palette um, in the future as well, because there are so many pretty shades in here. For today, let's just do this. You can see the opacity of it by itself. You can see it's a nice creamy formula. I haven't tried anything from Ethan that I don't like. Again, I haven't worn lipstick in a really long time, like a proper lipstick. Pretty. I've got some thoughts about these. This pencil is great. I love the tone of it. I think it's the perfect shade. If you have brows like mine, coloring like mine, it's a very cool toned eyebrow pencil, which is more difficult to find. Usually there is a little bit of purple or red that'll really stand out if again, you have coloring like mine. So it's a very nice, cool brown tone. Cooler than even the Brow Gel 032. Uh, now, like I said, I wanna see if there's a 033 Brow Gel because I love their Brow Gel, but I wish now that they were the same tone. Then we've got here the Clay de Poe shadow. Now this is a perfect level of shadow for me right now because I typically wear very little makeup, if any, during the day because I wear so much SPF. Um, so I try to find the products that look like I'm not wearing a lot of makeup. So that's where I am right now with makeup. Um, so this is perfect for that. It builds slowly, beautiful gossamer veil of color. Things blend really easily and effortless palette to wear. There's a little bit of a glow to it though. So there's nothing matte in here. Everything has a bit of glow to it, but it's a really pretty satin glow, very gentle. And even though this color here I used in the crease is something that I think a lot of us think that matte colors are the only things that can go in the crease. In fact, I did this with a Chantecaille product. It looked really nice as well. So something with a soft um, glow like that, I think is really pretty for the creased area as well as the overall look. It's very cohesive and it's a very fresh look. I think it's a really pretty eye brightening kind of product really lovely. So I'm excited about trying zero three with that. But if you do want a lot of color payoff right away, this might not be for you. And if you like mattes, maybe not the palette for you, but if you want something very soft, something very fresh, effortless, this is the kind of palette I think that you will enjoy. And of course, I think that deepest color, you can definitely smoke that out and do something bold if you like, which I have not tried yet, but I will because I think that would be really pretty and a really soft, smoky look. And then we've got here the Givenchy blush. I love the effect of this. It's a little tricky to work with though, so I would not say that this is an easy product to use on the go. I wouldn't bring this with me, but I really like the result. It's very much like the effect of a cream blush without the cream feel. It's a bit translucent. You can see just the color. I think it's a really really beautiful blush. But like I said, it's a very intentional look I would be going for and I would want to take time to apply that, but I don't think I have another blush that's a powder that does this. So it's very unique in that way. And then we've got here the Westman Atelier. Oh, I can't forget about this. The Westman Atelier, lovely potential hero product because I feel like it can be used under makeup, it can be used over makeup, it can be used in lieu of makeup. It's a very 
lovely, very refined glow, and you know I don't like particles. The Easton palette. I only used the one color today, but I like the formula. It's very creamy. There are so many different shades here. We'll play with those and put looks together. Let me know what you are excited about, what you picked up, if you picked up any of these, what your application tips are, because I definitely learn from you, and I know you learn from each other in the comment section below. But that is it for today's video, so please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.